everyone's always been good. Yeah. They just never promoted them. Yeah. That's that's the only thing. Like if yeah. you look at boxing, why do you think boxing does so well with Manny Pacquiao, yeah, Vasil Lomachenko, all these other small guys? Because they promote them. People know their names because boxing promotes it. Yeah. You know, like no offense, us fighters are not the brightest when it comes to social media. You know, so yeah. I know UFC fighters who have only five thousand followers. That's the thing. I feel like fighting, like the true competition, is in is not in the ring. It's in the marketing yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I go to jujitsu. We go to jujitsu together. Like, yeah. I have all the scratches on my face. People keep scratching me. Somehow, yeah. some way, it's just me. I'm so scared to get staff on my face. I had like a little scare on my ankle, like where it wouldn't go away. And I was like, dude, what if this happened to my face? So my ex girlfriend ended up, you know, she wrestled, okay. and she had staff right here. Okay. Now women wrestling back in the day, I don't know about now. They didn't have like an NCAA or an ex uh, organization that kept like the rules in check compared to like wrestlers. Yeah. You go to a tournament and let's say you got ringworm, they check you before you wrestle. I, I so I wrestled two years. Uh, I wrestled a year. I wrestled a year in Arkansas when I was like young, but it was a travel team. So we, my dad was connected with this rich dude, and it, it wasn't like a like a, a drive travel team. This dude yeah. had a private jet, and he would fly us to tournaments, and we were well, that's we dope. were like eight or nine or something, we'd go to Oklahoma <laughs> shit like that. So we were in Arkansas. But then I wrestled a year in Western PA, so that's where I spent mm. the other half of my life. I was good in Arkansas. I was horrible in Western Pennsylvania. Oh, every state is very different, but they so would so different. They would check your skin. They're like, oh, hey, yeah, you before got match, ringworm, you can't do it. Women, they didn't have that. Okay. So if you had ringworm, epitigo, herpes, MRSA, staph, whatever, yeah. you can just go wrestle. And so she had a staph infection on her forehead, not really knowing what it is. Like, yeah. oh, maybe it's a pimp or two. And then maybe like three days later, I was like, hey, maybe you should go to the hospital. We don't have health insurance. So anything yeah. going to the hospital is $500 automatically. Yeah, yeah. And we're college students. So she's like, no, 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 I'll be fine. The next day for being a very, very like beautiful, sleek person who's cutting weight, so very skinny, I don't know where her face just poofed up. It looked like she got stung by a bunch of bees. Jesus and I was like, yeah, I think you should. Mm, yeah, we should, we're taking it. This is before like any urgent care center popped up where you can just yeah. pay $100, see a nurse, you know, practitioner, stuff like that. Um, dude, it was bad. They were like, yeah, two days later, it might have turned into like MRSA. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, my ankle, you can still see like. The little scar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, it was like, it was there for like two weeks and I was like, I already suck at jujitsu. I'm like, dude, I'm <laughs> It's dude. like, this doesn't help at all. Yeah, I was like, this is horrible. I'm sitting here watching BJJ Fanatics. I'm like, this sucks too because I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't mm. have nobody to like rep any of this shit with. So I was like, it is what it is. Now my shoulder's tweak, so. It's knows? always a good time. Somebody came in the office, some guy, some guy we, I guess we just hired, and he was like, they tell people that I do jujitsu. You know what I mean? I'm like, guys, I'm two years in, like a yeah. year and a half, two years in. You, you stop telling people this. So I'll get like challenges here and there. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to, you know what I mean, be embarrassed in front of my people. And so I roll with this guy, but I don't warm up because I'm like, there's no, like if he doesn't have any experience, I'm mm -hmm. going to be like a black belt. Yeah. And uh, we roll whatever, but after be, d get done rolling, my shoulder like feels like tight. I'm like, all right, it's cool. You know what I mean? And I hear all the time, like all these jujitsu, like fighters and jujitsu guys are like, you're always going to train hurt. So I'm like, oh, yeah. they always train hurt. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to go train. There's no perfect training camp. Yeah, I was like, they always train hurt. You like, know what I mean? It's like I've been, I've had 10 weeks for fights. I've had months for fights. I've had nine days for fights. Yeah. Always something's hurt. Doesn't matter. Dude, I hear the craziest stories with the fighters in the training camps. Like I just, did you watch the uh, Will Harris podcast with Joe Rogan? No, I did not. So they were talking about um, fucking Kamar Usman mm -hmm. and uh, what was it? What's, what's the other gentleman's name? Leonard? That he just lost to? Yeah. Um, oh, Leonard. man. Now It's like I have it in my head. Uh, Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards. So they're talking about these guys' training camps. And I guess Kamaru will just year-round walk downstairs backwards mm -hmm. due to how messed up his knees are. And then they went into uh, Canelo Alvarez, mm -hmm. right? And so they were talking. Is that right? Yeah. And they were talking about his... I didn't even know the wrist had, like, a meniscus. I tore my meniscus a year into jiu-jitsu. Hmm. And bucket handle tear, yeah. let it go, tried to do stem cell, whatever. But basically, through fight camps, just training and being put in a position with, like, Kamar's knees, like, just not being able to walk again if you messed it up severely in a fight. Or, uh, I don't know, did you watch the UFC fights this past weekend? Yeah. With that dude's gash? And, oh, yeah, it was bad. You saw the vein coming through Yeah, and that huge vein. Mm-hmm. 
That was disgusting. It's, it's crazy because I know a lot of jiu-jitsu practitioners, like black belts, high-level black belts. Yeah. Even uh, Jillian Robertson, she ended up fighting for the UFC. She's a girl with the red hair. Yeah. Um, she has the most submission wins, if not, I think, finishes in UFC history for flyweights. Okay. And I remember she would always have knee pain. I was like, yeah, you know, maybe one of these days go check it out. One day after a fight, she got it checked out. You know, UFC pays for it. And she's like, yeah, I have a torn meniscus on this side. I have, like, a missing MCO on this side and, like, all these other things. And I'm like, you're... I tore my MCO and I'm getting surgery. She's yeah. every single day and she would cry sometimes after practice, yeah. but still keep on going. And she's still, you know, trying to do go-go platas and platas, you know, bringing your foot all the way up, rubber guard, yeah. mission control. And you're like, and me, I'm now coming back two years after from MCL surgery and yeah. I had a slight LCL tear on this one. And again, this is like small things compared to people who are training without meniscuses, yeah. you know, training without other ligaments. I know some people who train without MCL or uh, ACLs. Yeah. And they're that's the biggest one. What's the worst injury you've you've kind of received um, and trained through? One, I know I've gotten in a fight. So when I was uh, for Titan FC, I ended up bumping up weight class to fight bantam weight because I'm usually a flyweight. Yeah. Now I'm getting fat and old, so I need to bump up. And I decided to, I won the flyweight championship. I defended it. UFC still didn't want me. So I'm like, oh, let me bump up and figure out something else. Let me, let me beat their champion. So it was champ versus champ. And I fought the Bantamweight champion and he just won a tournament. So he was like the legit guy, 17 and seven. I'm like, oh, damn, this could be, this gonna be a good matchup. I'm thinking in the fight, like, man, this guy doesn't hit hard. It's like two minutes in. I don't know. Are you ever, you ever play Super Smash Bros? Uh, I like, don't. Re- you know, Captain Falcon. Yeah, 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 or somebody's yeah, yeah. like okay, Falcon. Yeah. Probably takes like three seconds to charge up his punch. Yeah. If you run into it, it's freaking devastating. Well, he, I didn't see it coming. I have no clue how he literally touched the floor and then came up swinging with a hook. Yeah. Like it took almost three seconds for him to bring the punch all the way up. I got dropped when I fell. I fell like that awkward Family Guy type of fall. Yeah. And uh, little I know, I tore my MCO. Fuck. I got back up. I was like, all right, cool. My turn to retaliate. I threw the punch a little bit wrong. I landed with just one knuckle and I broke my hand, which you can still yeah. like see the scar here. And I'm like, okay, I felt the click here. And I'm like, is my hand broken? I punched him again. I was like, yeah, no, it's definitely broken. And then, you know, you keep on getting punched. You get kicked. You have to block, do all these things. And yeah. I'm, it's still, you know, breaking more. So I sit down after the first round and my coach is like, hey, you stopped throwing your right hand. What's up? I'm like, you know, they're mic'd up. So I'm like, oh, I broke my hand. He's like, Okay, no one else knows besides him, not even my other corners. So yeah. he's like, all right, cool, I want you to, oh, when he gets close, you know, do whatever you can. I didn't know that this was torn. So when I got up, you know, I went to shake out my body, I shook out this leg, and this leg just went straight up and down. And I looked down, I'm like, oh, well, that's not good. And I kind of dragged my leg out, and then you start getting punched in the head, you forget. Yeah. So I don't know if you watch uh, boxing, but Mickey Ward versus um, Arturo Gatti. Arturo Gatti in the third fight breaks his hand and maybe in the fourth round and everyone knows his hand is broken when it came to the sixth and seventh round he just started throwing because his hand went numb yeah like the adrenaline finally kicked in he's like it's already broken might as well so after that after that maybe two minutes of the second round my hand went numb I don't even realize this and I just kept on going and I ended up winning the next four rounds so and did so I won the decision the, and yeah, then you and won, I won okay. the championship and I defended it and kept on going. But yeah, it took me and that was Titan? six months. Yeah, Titan FC. Okay. And then what are they where did they show? Like where where on UFC Fight Pass. On UFC Fight Pass? Okay. Yeah. So what year was that? That was in twenty seventeen. And the crazy thing was, you know, I tore my MCO and you can tear it in different places. So I guess I tore it at the very top where it didn't need surgery. You know, you just don't run on it, don't do crazy things internally for four months, rehab yeah. it properly and you'll be fine. And then I do a jiu-jitsu tournament, a black belt competition. I win, but in the process, I got heel hooked. I got out, but at the same time, this got out. It was just one of those, like, all right, and especially for heel hooks, I was like, all right, it's one attempt. Like, let me try to get out. And if I don't get out, like, hey, man, you got it. Was it inside or outside? Uh, It was whatever I – inside. Yeah, it was inside. So I was here, and I went to turn, and I was was out, but it just immediately popped. And I I heard and felt the pop, and I remember looking down like – uh, well, I got four more minutes. I've torn it before. I'll be fine. Kept on going. Then after the fight, you know, limp. I had to go to the hospital. And they actually gave me a bad reading. They go, oh, no, your MCL is fine. I was like, mm, I don't know. I've torn it before, and I feel very off yeah. balance. And then they had to read it again. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, your stuff is gone. It tore from the bottom. And if it tears from the bottom, that's really your choice, depending on your profession, if you want to get surgery. For me, I'm always active. I'm a small guy. We move a lot compared yeah. to the heavyweights. They're like, man, you should get surgery. So because it was torn, if it doesn't, what it does, it springs up when yeah. it tears. So it will reattach. But the only problem is by the time it reattaches, your calf muscle kind of already folded over to the bone. And now that attaches over the muscle instead of this attaches to the bone first. Mm. So you don't have as much stabilization. And then your other ligaments overcompensate. Yeah. So then maybe my ACL goes or my meniscus and all this other stuff goes. So decided to get surgery, and I've been out since. So, and then 
you have a are you training? It looks like right now. Yeah. So, so I'm 100 percent back. I'm getting ready for a fight, and you know I'm actually leaving next week or not next week. Uh, the following Monday, October 3rd, to Bahrain and train out there for about a month. So where are you going to train? In Bahrain, the kingdom of Bahrain. It's a small country in the Middle East. Okay. And uh, how long will that camp out there be? So it'll be about four weeks. And then when's the fight? It's supposed to be October 28th. And then. Is it still through Titan FC? No, this is through Brave Combat Federation, so the biggest uh, organization in the Middle East and Asia. Is this one that uh, Khabib is putting together? No, no, that's Eagle FC, and that's uh, located in Miami. Oh, okay. All right, dope. So what's kind of like your, your vision with, with Brave? You want to work up, be a champion there, and then um, transition into something else? You know, it, it, just, it really depends. So actually, today is their six-year anniversary. So they've been around for six years. They've mm -hmm. traveled so far to the most countries around the world, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Because um, they're giving so many different countries like Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, you know, Germany, all these European countries, even places in Brazil that, you know, you're, you think UFC is going to go to like Rio or Sao Paulo, like the big cities that everyone knows, but they're going to smaller cities and collaborating with smaller promotions, giving, you know, those guys more recognition. The guys that like, yeah. for example, Manny Pacquiao, no one knew who Manny Pacquiao was. Yeah. The Silo Machenko, Triple G, no one cared because they weren't American or at least in, uh, you know, in front of American television. Mm. And I don't know where they go against Americans in the States. It's like, oh, my gosh, these guys are great. So Brave is giving a lot of people like that a lot of recognition. Yeah. Even one of the guys I fought, Amir Abazi, like I was able to beat him easily. But then now a couple wins after he gets makes it to the UFC, he's, I believe, 3-0 in the UFC. It's like that promotion gave him a lot of recognition to get to the promotion he wanted to fight for. For me, given I was in the flyweight tournament, I was supposed to fight um, Ali Bagutinov. He fought Demetrius Johnson for the belt back in the day in the UFC. That's Mighty, um, Mighty Mouse? Right? Yeah, Mighty Mouse. Okay. And so I was supposed to fight him, Ali, but I ended up missing weight. I had a slightly torn LCL and a cracked rib. I still tried to cut weight, yeah. and my body just naturally got thicker over the What's you know, it like having years. a cracked rib? Dude, it sucks. I've had a cracked sternum before. That's way worse. Was that like your, what's the most painful injury? Painful is probably the cracked sternum. Because How do you crack your sternum? <laughs> so the I can't remember the kid's name, but we wrestled in high school. And our senior year, we wrestled at sectional. Basically, whoever won that match was going to go for the first and second place for sectional. Yeah. Will automatically qualify for state. This kid was a freshman, a prodigy. Like, there's no reason why I should be beating him. And um, I faced him in the semifinal. I ended up uh, losing, or I was getting close to losing by four points. And then I don't know where he took a, took a shot. I timed it correctly, and I threw him straight to his back and I didn't pin him but I got the five point move so I won by one point make it to yeah. the finals and I made it to state and given he made it but on the other side of the bracket and so I was like okay cool made state yeah like that's all I really cared about yeah and um, the next two years, I All-American in college, and then now this kid finally graduates from high school, and he's going to go to Brown University, a phenomenal Division One university. Like, this kid is talented yeah. and talented. I faced him when he was, like, 14, 15. I'm, like, 17, 18 now. And so at the time in college, we uh, showed up at Open Mat together, automatically a grudge match. And I was like, hey, man, let's wrestle. And you can tell he wanted to redeem himself in practice. Yeah. And I was like... Ah, it's gonna be one of those days. All right, yeah, cool. And so we're going back and forth. I'm having fun. Like it is what it is, and um, we just it was just nonstop. Like I would take him down, then he would take me down, and we wouldn't quit. And people were like, "Hey, let us in." And we're like, "No, no, no. We're we're still going. Like we just want somebody to give up." And I shot a single leg, and I am exhausted. Yeah. And I shot a single leg, and he went to like kind of turn and mule kick out, and I just didn't let go. Yeah. And instead of letting go and just starting over, I fell. And when he fell, he landed like his toes down, heel pointed up. Oh, shit. And I just collapsed because I was so exhausted. Yeah. I did stuff early in the day, boxing. I just, I shouldn't have went to wrestling, but I did anyways. Yeah. And I fell, and the first thing that landed was the heel to my chest. I hear a snap. I'm thinking it's his ankle because when, it, when, I, when his heel hit me, his foot turned and it went flat. So I was like, oh, dude, is your, is your ankle okay? He turns to me, he's like, yeah, I'm fine. What about you? And I don't know. I'm just like, just that like snap, like, ah. And I slowly had to crawl out. I'm like, ah, I think I'm done for the day. The next day when I woke up, it took me 11 minutes to get out of bed. Fuck. So what did you do? There's you can't a... really do anything. Yeah. As long as nothing's piercing your organs, like, that's it. Like, anything, ribs or, or your sternum, like, if it's cracked, if it's broken, as long as it's not dislocated, all you got to do is just wait. There's, it's, it's not like they can put a cast in your body. Yeah. You know, maybe just take some painkillers and that's about it. Yeah. So that's all I did. I relaxed for about two months. Are are the uh, transitioning back into the brave? Are the are the rule sets a little different with brave? So they're the exact same as UFC, which is you know the most yeah. popular organization. At least that's 
they think because it's the Middle East or Asia, they think it's like Pride or 1FC rules. Yeah. Where it's like you can do soccer kicks. I kind of wish we could do that. On the ground? Mm-hmm. But I, I kinda, feel like, you, I, it's I feel just like more someone's going to gonna die. Um, semi, well, you look at it this way. You know, it's like small fighters, we take more damage to our careers and earlier. Compared to the bigger guys, it's one big shot. And then you're probably knocked out, but yeah. you see guys, heavyweights especially, fighting until 40, 45. Some of them, if you're lucky, even 50. Like yeah. if they really want to do that. Hey, look at all, look at Bellator guys. But you go to overseas, yeah, you might get scratched up, you might get beat up, but you take one soccer kick, like, okay, cool, it's a soccer kick. All right, let's go. You have the next fight. It's one big shot compared to little guys were taking maybe a hundred plus in a fight, yeah. and it takes me forever to knock you out. But if I could have need you on the ground, Demetrius Johnson versus Adrian Amores, the first fight, that's how DJ lost, and then DJ retaliates, doing the same exact thing to him. The second fight and wins. Yeah, you know, so it's a whole different rule set. It's insane though, be, well, and and I feel like the long term effects can't even truly be measured yet. I mean, I guess they can because I, I guess you know cage fighting's been around now for what 40 years diego sanchez <laughs> he's he's known for having cte yeah but I, i'm and i'm thinking like what are the next 20 to 40 years gonna look like with with i don't i i know i i mean i don't know like i can't say empathetically in regard to a to mm-hmm. a fighter's mind just out of just the small glory i get from fighting and i've always you know street fights and little things like that but uh i could see where like who cares you know what i mean i'm just gonna go out in the ring well, you know, who gives a fuck? Well, especially as fighters, like, we grew up fighting because it's a poor man's sport. Yeah. That's us- usually yeah. the only reason we decided to fight because it was our only way out of the neighborhood. For me, Chicago representing yeah. them, always, like, that was my way out of the neighborhood, and I'm happy for it. Yeah. I never expected this career to last as long as it did, nor do I ever, like, plan to see tomorrow. So for me, a fight's a fight, and then if I make the next one, awesome. If it doesn't, then, man, I was just happy to be part of this career. Yeah. Like, us fighters only think about fighting. We don't care what happened. Justin Gaethje, like that man has been through wars. Yeah. And sometimes you talk to him, you're like, are you okay? Yeah. Like, and I, I can tell you. I feel like you guys deserve like a pension or something, we, like we, a union. There should well, be a for fighter's sure. union For sure. Something. I mean, we put our lives on the line. Fuck. You know, like, for example, let's say. You don't get health insurance. through No, the, nothing. For example. Like, when when you I, have an active contract, do you, though? Like No. So if I have an active contract with. If, I, if that happens in the fight. Oh, if that's happening so in the fight. So, for example, um, like my knee. I ended up tearing it in a jiu-jitsu competition. Sadly, the competition had poor health insurance. Yeah. So I had to pay for my knee out of my own pocket. That was 12000 out of pocket, which yeah. really, really sucks when you don't fight. Yes. And then two is, what if this just happened in practice? It, let's say I'm still getting ready for a fight. This happened in practice. I have to take care of it. So you, it doesn't cover the camp. It literally only covers the fight. Yeah. And so, that's most fighting. Are there any... Uh, not that I know. Think of. fight fight fights out there that like cover it? No, only only during their fights. Only during. So like if you're there fight week and you so happen to get hurt during like um fight week under their grounds, then sure. You know, it's their property, they yeah. brought you in. Cool. They you were getting getting ready for their event in their grounds, then yeah. cool. Then they cover it to a certain extent. If it's the fight, for sure they cover it one hundred percent. Um, I guess until it reaches a certain cap. You know, because yeah. every insurance has like, oh, hey, we'll cover 25000 yeah, or yeah. we'll cover so much, um, which definitely gets you because smaller promotions, LFA, Titan, you know, the, the regional promotions that get you to that UFC, Bellator, yeah. Brave level, um, they have a cap. So I know one guy who ended up snapping his shin in half, the, the insurance company knew, or uh, not the insurance, the doctor or the hospital knew that uh, he didn't personally have health insurance. And so they just overcharge you. They're like, oh, you're going to pay out of pocket and you're going to pay in general. You don't have insurance or this this insurance by the promotion only pays so much. We're going to take their money and still charge more. Yeah. Which is crazy. That's scammy. Well, it's, it's – think about it like um, like if you go to urgent care. Urgent care, if I go to urgent care right now, it's probably $100. Just yeah. to go like, hey, I want to see a doctor for whatever reason. But if you have insurance – for some reason, the bill is like two hundred, three hundred dollars. Yeah, and they'll like, max the insurance out. Cause, yeah, and it's yep. like oh, it's, everything's kind of like the the low money plan. Yeah, if it covers a little bit, they're gonna co- charge you and the insurance at the same time. Yeah, which ends up being the same. And it's like yeah, it's nuts. So for me, that's why luckily I get to go overseas and do all my medicals over there. It's so much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can just walk into a hospital and see every. Like I remember I went to to Saudi Arabia to do my my medicals and all of it. I think it was MRI. 
eye tests. Can you do uh, blood tests? Can you do like stem cells, or would that show up as like? Do they do USADA um, testing for Brave? And, and so Brave does it on certain countries. So like for okay. example, the states here, um, obviously USADA is for sure everything, especially a part of the UFC. Yeah, Bellator has no USADA. You think that'll ever go into ADCC? Um, no. It really can't. No. Not it would have to be like. I mean, they years. can. They would yeah. have to, everyone have to like kind of unionize and agree with it. The promotion itself, I, but everyone I don't think would it's be fucked. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you saw this weekend. It's yeah, like they all looked. What, what was that yoked. guy from WCW? The blonde dude that would like kiss his muscles. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know who I'm talking about? Like I, it, they all look like action figures. Yeah. And it's like, no, this, this is this is fair. Because I watch fighters. I like watch a fighter like train in camp, and it's like if he don't look like that, and you just roll. Which rolling is fucking hard, but like, yeah, and you just roll around like this dude's going through like a war, you know what I mean? And then you got like somebody that eats us. Like I was, I was listening to this podcast with uh, Musa Mechi, I think this uh, kid kid's name is. He's mm-hmm. a, apparently a legend, you know what I mean, in regard okay. to jujitsu. He's like a, a phenom, like Gordon, uh, just smaller. I think he's like one thirty five or something. So he's fun size. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, his he trains every day just jujitsu, but it's just pasta and acai. He was talking <laughs> about he just eats pasta, acai, and pizza. That and I'm like, awesome. I don't know of any fighters that can like get away with that diet. And yeah. like, even the genetic freaks of like um, Yoel Romero, he is he is a monster. He's the only one that I could say it looks freakish. But that's one out of how many people we've seen in all of these different mm-hmm. fighting things. That's like, I don't I don't know, dude. It's it's freaky when I look at some of the, some of these guys. I'm like, you got to be on something. Dude. How are all these guys out here? You know what I mean? Unless it's, it's just genetics. Well, especially with jujitsu, like there's no. There's no, I mean, there's big organizations now, yeah. but especially back in the day, like you're still growing. So they're like, for example, my knee surgery, um, when I got hurt in that competition, jujitsu isn't like uh, verified, like wrestling tournaments yeah. and stuff like that. So there's specific insurance for that. They're like, oh, you're running a combatives event? Okay, cool. Then you fit in this general realm, then you can pick whatever insurance compared to like if it's wrestling, if it's fighting, like yeah. these are the things you have to pick automatically. So when it comes to like drug testing and stuff like that, like there's no real set rules. No. So that's that's where it gets wild. What about what's your thoughts on like the weight cutting and then uh, some yeah. of these? I just missed weight last fight. So the so the big thing actually my degree was kinesiology when yeah. I went to school and my study coincidentally was cutting weight because I had a, a really really hard time cutting down the one twenty five given I didn't grow tall wise but I grew thickness and I grew yeah. muscle as you you know grow older that's just natural and um, my coach would never let me bump up in weight class. It's just, he's like, oh, you signed the contract for three years, full ride. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But all these other guys kind of did the same thing, but they get to bump up weight class. I was a little like pulled to the side. Me and my coach 100% didn't get along, but, um, I always had a hard time given, could I have done it better? Yeah. No one teaches you in college, but I did it anyways. Garbage bags, sauna, spitting, laxatives, hell, trying to bleed out, trying to throw up, trying to do really dumb stuff. Three kids in 1997 in college, 18 and 19 years old, two of them died of a heat stroke. One of them died of a heart attack because they would take the bikes in the sauna, wear all the plastics, and then, you know, yeah. kill them in a sack, I remember literally sleeping, kill themselves. I remember sleeping with, a, uh, with the, with bags the garbage on. bag. Yeah. yeah, a couple times. And, oh, man, I, I've, I've had people do that in my house. They're like, yeah, dude, sleep over. And they're like, this whole side is just wet. I'm like, oh, damn. But <laughs> so I was, you know, I was cutting weight and I would have a hard time. Yeah. I remember... When I got cut, I got. Uh, I remember I told my coach, I'm like, I'm not making this weight class anymore. Let me bump up, and we don't have a guy there. Like it only makes sense. What do you even feel like when you cut down? Like you I can't recover. Like we'll see if it's fighting. You have 24 hours to so 36, depending on the promotion. Yeah. You know, so like UFC, Brave, Bellator, they usually give about 36 hours. So if you make weight, which which is the one where you have to fight like immediately after? Is there one? Out? I thought I heard so, of one where you you weigh in right before the fight. Well, there's there's like the IMUF the, the, for the amateurs, the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. Yeah. I had to do that. You make you fight five times in six days, and you make weight every single day. Oh my god! And so for me, I fought at 35. I'm younger. I weighed maybe like 45 naturally. So I'm like I'm gonna do this instead of cutting down to 25. Yeah. But what we would do is fight, literally put on our sauna tops and go run in Las Vegas heat when it was in the states still. But so I was, you know, I ended up missing weight. I told my coach, I'm like, hey, I'm going to wrestle 133. He goes, no, 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 you're cut. Pulled my scholarship. I had to take him to court. When I t- This is my last year. This yeah. is my last semester to graduate college. Without this money, I wouldn't have graduated college. I'm like, yeah. dude, I just did four and a half years of school for you to get it pulled, whatever. So I ended up going to court, write all the stuff I need to, and uh, 
I have pictures of before and after. I'm pretty sure you've done the same when you had to make weight. You're like, oh, this is me before. This yeah. is me after all ripped, jacked. Yeah. You might feel like crap, but you look good. Yeah. And um, the whole board was mothers, which worked 100% in my favor. So I'm like, oh, hey, these are my you know before and after pictures. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you look you know malnourished and horrendous <laughs> and this. Now I'm like, hey, I appreciate it, ladies. Yeah. Thank you. Started and, offering you food on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> and they ended up you know giving me my scholarship back, yeah. and um, he and ended up getting in trouble food. for it. But... <laughs> So when the three kids died in 1987, yeah. that's when college and even high school started doing uh, hydration tests. Yes, I've they're heard like of you this. have to take hydration tests and you have to take um, a body fat percentage mm -hmm. to see how much weight you can cut uh, to make a certain weight class. Yeah. So if you wanted to make whatever weight class uh, at this time, they'll say, "Hey, honestly, you can't do it this semester. It's going to have to be towards the end of the year." Yeah. But you'd have to make a certain weight every time. So one FC, they had a guy die two, three years ago. Yeah. Um, Dude, it's horrendous. They ended up, the coaches are lifting this guy, like walking him to weigh-ins. He couldn't walk himself. Ah. And he gets on the scale looking like, um, what's the guy who played Batman in The Dark Knight? Like Christian Bale in yeah. that one movie where he's all skinny? Yeah. He ended up looking like that, and then they had to carry him off the scale. It took almost a minute for him to weigh in because he kept, like, wobbling on the scale because he was so malnourished. Fuck. And so after that, I think they still let him fight, but uh, he ended up passing away. And after that, they're like, all right, we need to. Uh, yeah. So in one FC specifically, flyweight is actually 135. Okay. I've, so when I when I used to spar with Adrian Amores, um, who used to be the champ, I'm like, dude, you make flyweight, man. I'm doing something wrong in my life. Like we're talking about the genetic guys. I'm like, yeah, Damn, I must be doing something wrong in my life. He goes, ah, oh, brother, it's it's actually 61 kg. I was like, oh, it's 135. Huh. Okay. That's uh, never mind then. So. So what do you do? You think more more of the. Uh what do you call it? Like a like a UFC a Bellator? What would the terminology be for that? Like a fight? Uh, what would that be? Like a fighting company in yeah. a sense? Yeah, promotion. So, do you think the these promotional companies should they have more? Do you think they should be le more lenient on like the weight cut or have more weight uh, weight brackets? Oh, one hundred percent more weight brackets. Yeah, I still why believe don't they? It's cheaper. Think about it. If you have more weight classes, it's more fighters more you have to pay. pay. You know, so for me, my two fights that I had in UFC was a nine-day notice, 26 pounds. And then I think it was uh, like 45 days after, they called me again to fight Alex Perez, the one that I ended up losing. I had to cut 28 pounds. Okay. Originally, when I won the first fight, you know, you take whatever fight you need to get to get to, uh, to the UFC. Yeah. I lost 26 pounds, nine days. Sucked. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. And but I make weight, I win. However, the you know people say it's accidental. I don't care. I won. You know, I got the win bonus. I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm now a UFC fighter, and I've worked really hard for it. So I'm happy. They go, hey, this is July. Hey, you're gonna fight in December. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm still gonna help my team, but I'm gonna enjoy myself and be fat and happy. I just did this huge weight cut. Let me yeah. enjoy myself. Then a few days later, they go, hey, uh, you're gonna fight Alex Perez in 20 days. I was like that's great and i know he's denied a fight for me before i had to deny a fight for him before so i was like i'd love to fight him but this is 20 days dude i got uh 28 pounds just to make that weight i just did you guys a favor like help me out here he goes uh and this is when the flyweight division was now being like cut you know so yeah. like slowly people were kind of being dwindled away um dj was still the champion so he's like uh you either take this fight or you don't fight until next year. And next year doesn't mean January. Yeah. I'm getting paid super small, like the entry level UFC. So I'm like, damn, I kind of need the money. You know? Yeah. I'm like, oh, and I still want to redeem myself in the first. Even though I won, I didn't win in my fashion. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, it's more than nine days. So I'm going to do it. Like you're saying with the weight cut, and you've cut weight before. Yeah. Mentally, it's so draining. I was in a 33 fight winning streak. That was I, that was eighth grade weight cutting. So, but I but I mean, still, but, <laughs> I don't know. But you're wearing the garbage bag. I mean, yeah. mentally, you're like, ah, I got, I need to stop eating yeah. and drinking. Given I had nutrition, that did suck. But I lost 54 pounds in 60 days with the two weight cuts. Yeah. And I'm a flyweight, so that's a lot. That, dude, that's almost half my weight. You yeah. know, and so. Um, I get there. I'm on a 33 fight winning streak from amateur and pro. Yeah. And I go in there Monday of. I'm fighting at the Staples Center. Win Suhudo ended up winning against DJ the second time. Yeah. And that's uh, what you remind me of. You remind me of Suhudo. Dude, I yeah. This is a whole Mexican thing. I'm more Calvin Gastelum. Yeah. But uh, especially like during Halloween, we just get all fat <laughs> candy. But dude, I. I got there wanting to just get it over and done with, like not even caring how everything went. Yeah. You know, I end up losing, so be it. I'm like, I'll be 3-1 in the UFC. I have a four-fight contract. And then I saw them trade DJ for Ben Askren at the time. Mm. And I was like, 
they're going to cut us. And so I had my own like video series on YouTube and uh, I promoted it. BJPenn.com shared it. MMA Junkie was like, man, this guy's on to something. Everyone shared it. They're like, oh, no, you know, actually you are cut. I was like, oh, what? They're like, yeah, yeah, you're going to be the first one cut. So I ended up being cut in that whole flyweight demise. And then slowly, once people lost, everyone else started to get cut. Who is the current flyweight champion? Because um, honestly, I feel like it's not a good... Interim is Brandon Moreno, and I believe the undisputed champ technically is Figueredo. Okay, that, I guess those two are a decent fight. Well, they're, they're, yeah. they're phenomenal. Yeah. Like, you know, I was... I but I, don't think, I can't think Brandon of anybody Moreno. other than those two. Well, see, the thing is now, like, everyone's always been good. Yeah. They just never promoted them. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing. Like, if yeah. you look at boxing, why do you think boxing does so well with Manny Pacquiao, Vasil Lomachenko, all these other small guys? Because they promote them. Yes. Like, you know Devin Haney. You know, I, I can't remember the kid who just missed weight um, uh, yesterday. He fights tonight. But another kid who's really, really good. And it's like people know their names because boxing promotes it. Yeah. You know, like, no offense, us fighters are not the brightest when it comes to social media. You know, so yeah. I know UFC fighters who have only 5,000 followers. That's the thing. I feel like fighting, like, the true compensation is in, is not in the ring. It's in the marketing yourself mm -hmm. because the sustainability is going to correspond with can you market yourself? Because you can lose. I mean, look at Conor McGregor. They'll, they let him come back and do whatever, and I haven't seen him dominate in since I was, a, like, a kid kid. Look at YouTubers. Yes, look at YouTubers. I mean, they're getting paid. They're main events. How do how do your fighter friends feel in regard to like somebody like Jake Paul who has like, are these rigged? How did he beat Tyron Woodley? Well, the first one I think was a little bit rigged. There might have been something in the contract for because Woodley kind of turned himself on like it later like on in the fight. He just completely dropped. I'm like, but not that, even I would have got knocked out by. But that like, last fight, I was just like. Because I know him personally, you know, so like I don't I'm not ever going to bring that up in discussion. But like me, my friend, my friend is like his little protege, his mini me. Jake and, Paul or Tyron? Uh, Tyron. OK. And I remember we're just like, dude, you don't get knocked out like that to, for extra money. Like you just don't. Yeah. Like I, I can understand Jake beating uh, Ben Askren and all that stuff like Ben Askren's just not good. Yeah. It comes to stand up. So be it. You know? Yeah. But like that's a perfect fight for you. But now him fighting Anderson Silva, I think it's a whole thing, a whole different thing. But if he beats Anderson Silva, it's fucking rigged. Then like, okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, or or he just, I don't, yeah, I do believe it's rigged. But, you know, the thing is they know how to sell tickets. They're popular. And all they do Insane. is talk smack. Yeah, they just talk and shit. And no offense, like, we're fight fans and plus we're in the sports. So we know at least what, you know, some people have to do to get in there. But other people, the average fan doesn't. You yeah. know, so when YouTubers, because they look big and brawny or whatever the case may be, they say whatever, people are like, yeah, Muhammad Ali has a quote. If you if I say I'm the greatest long enough, eventually people are going to start to believe me. Yeah. And they're going to call me the greatest. Look at years later. Everyone calls them the greatest ever. Yeah. The same thing with Jake and Logan Paul. They can talk all the smack. As long as they say it long enough, people are like, Starting you know what? Yeah. He might win. And that's yeah. what's happening now. They have somewhat of an athletic background. If you like look into their story and stuff, that they like wrestled, yeah, little bit of jiu-jitsu and different things like that. But I... The thing with me is like coming from like just fighting and beating a few kids up in, in school to then going to a mat and like, thinking like, kids. I, well, I'm thinking, well, and then I'm thinking like, I already thought I was like, I can hold my own on the street. And then I go onto a mat and I get choked out by a girl and I'm like, there's, there's, it's, it's so mm -hmm. technical. And so, and then I think of like, well, I've never gotten into a fight with someone that's, that's had their hands trained for five years consecutively. They just yeah. showed like, I couldn't imagine fighting somebody where it's like even even somebody like just foolishly like someone like more egotistical which pretty much like every man but like looking at you and thinking mm -hmm. like oh I'm about to beat the shit out of him you know what I mean I'm, the, the cauliflower helps the yeah. cauliflower's for sure so when they see absolutely. the cauliflower they're like all right we're not gonna fuck with that guy <laughs> unless you fuck absolutely you absolutely unwise like, and then I I feel bad for the guys that like don't develop the ca cauliflower and somebody like picks a fight on them you see it I see it like two times a year like mm -hmm. somebody will pick a fight on a fighter and not realize they're a fighter. And it's just like, because I don't know, is it technically when you have your pro card, you can't really, like, you have to you can't, really yeah, refrain. can't fight, yeah. Yeah, you can't really which, hit anybody. Which also kind of sucks because, you know, there would be there, times where I'm you like. You have to register your hands. Is that actually true? I've uh, always that, heard. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if, you have to register if, your if hands. That's the thing that I haven't done it, and I should. But um, I know, for example. You have a void like, card for your hands? Yeah, like, when I go out, like, sometimes I'll be blinged out with jewelry, so I have my friends with me, and they're all bigger. You have you know? to. P&B rock? And, yeah. And some people just, you know, they get drunk and talk shit. And yeah. they want to fight you and whatever. They can. And especially cauliflower, like, oh, this guy's tough. Especially when I was in college, the townies is what we like to call them. They yeah. see wrestlers. Wrestlers are bigger, you know, more fit. Yeah. They get drunk. They're like, oh, you know how to fight. Well, you think you're tough. And they would try to pick a fight. For me, I can't just be like, all right, cool, I'm going to defend myself. Yeah, if it's one so person, like, I have to make sure if I do fight back, 
like all odds are against me. Yeah, that it's I can recorded, use that in court. Yeah, it, yeah. recorded. I can be like, dude, it was two, three against one. You tried to avoid. They it. had a weapon. You yeah, know, I did everything to stop it, or whatever the case may be. Like Kevin Holland, um, doing all this superhero stuff that he's doing. You know, stopping robberies and yeah. grabbing back purses from people. Like he's just taking people down and holding them. So they can't really sue him back. It's not like he's beating them up. That's he's like, scary though, too, because look what happened to Leandro, Leandro Lowe, right? That that BJJ fighter. Mm-hmm. So, or not? I can't. I, I gotta stop calling them fighters. But uh, BJJ practitioner. BJJ okay. practitioner. <laughs> whatever. So notorious black belt, and uh, takes him dude it down in a club, mm-hmm. and uh, gets up. He's like, "Are we good? Are we good?" He gets up, and the dude shoots him in the head. Oh shit! Yeah. So it's like. I was like, was he in Chicago? Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a Chicago story. He was in Brazil, but it was all it was all over the jujitsu community. So he was which, big just in jujitsu. Which so like my brother has been he's died twice. My brother's physically died twice. He's been hit with a, uh, a bat in the back of the head Ugh. twice, and luckily people were there to like be able to stop the guy from finishing the job. And the second was uh, he was stabbed seventeen times at a club. Jesus. Christ. And my brother on that instance was fighting like three four guys. Yeah. And winning. And one guy's like, nah, fuck this, and pulls out the knife. Yeah. You know, it's just like, ah. That's today. Like, that's 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 pretty. I feel like people say more and more, like, that's today's day and age. But that's just kind of like humane, like, wrong circle. Like, mm-hmm. that's just going to oh, happen. It's wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. And that's. Is he a fighter, too? Well, he he never had the opportunity to fight. And that's why, like, I had my foundation to help people yeah. get inside the gym. But he never had the opportunity to fight. But yeah. he was always, physically, when it comes to, like, genetics, he was way more naturally talented. Is he older? Was, yeah, he's eight years older. See, you always hear stories like this with like fighters, especially when like when I when I listen to it. There's always this older brother that just kicks your ass. You know what I mean? Oh, or, was, or at he, least gives you a run for your money. He still is amazing. It pisses me off. Yeah, because he has scars and all that stuff. Like some of his muscles shouldn't be working, but somehow it's working. It's, yeah, is still better than me as a professional athlete. Yeah, like dude, I hate you. So <laughs> where where did you guys grow up then? So. He primarily, we both grew up in McKinley Park. He grew primarily up there, and then I grew up uh, half my life in Cicero. Okay, so are you guys half brothers or full brothers? We're full brothers. Okay, sadly, but we're we're full brothers. I do have two half sisters that I found out after my father passed away, which is always really wow. fun. Um, so I never really had a relationship with them, but yeah. my brother, being eight years older, slowly followed in my dad's footsteps, which wasn't the best. So yeah. growing up, he was like, "Hey, man, I might not be the best, you know, big brother role model that you want." Yeah, I went left. All I can do is and say is that didn't work. You should go right. Yeah. Because that's what I would choose now. Yeah. And so I would do that. So who were you closest with growing up? Uh, really myself. <laughs> yeah. I was always outside. Yeah. So for me, my dad had one rule. He goes, I don't care if you come back home. I don't care what you do. Like, just don't bring the cops back home. Yeah. I grew up in a trap house. So we had drugs in the house. Yeah. So he's like, I don't care what you do. Just don't bring the cops home. My brother would always bring the cops home. So that was yeah. like the caveat of like. Don't be like him. I yeah. was like, okay, cool. And so I always hung out. My mom took me everywhere when it came to going to the gym or going yeah. to training in football, baseball, wrestling, karate, like all that stuff. And then in high school, I was just always outside or doing sports. Yeah, so what were your what were your hobbies in high school? Like what sports? What you um, love? So I was a three-season sporter. I was football, wrestling, baseball. Yeah. And then I did martial arts all year round. What position, weight class, all that? So football, because I was so small and coaches naturally, even no matter how talented I was, in given football, not so much. But they're just like, play whatever you want to play. Like, you're going to be on the JV team and we'll yeah. put you in wherever. And uh, Dude, I've played defensive line. I've played QB. I've played every position you can think of besides yeah. offensive line. Yeah. And uh, I just had fun. I liked, I liked hitting people. And plus, I've always had a Napoleon complex. Yeah. So I was like. Big guy. I'm going straight after him. Yeah. Or, like, I would never juke when I ran the ball because I'm like, I'm going to just show that I can go against the big guys. Yeah. What inspired, like, this fire inside of you, like, growing up? Like, when did you really um, kind of, like, man, this is probably where this came from? Uh, my family always beat the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I always like to mess around. My mom, like, I would always thank her for, like, spending all of her free time taking me to, you know, karate, all these different sporting yeah. events. My brother for being that, like, good, bad, big brother. Hey, I went left. Don't do it. Go right. Yeah. Dad, you made me tough because, well, no one's going to hit me as hard as my dad hit me you know so it's like i can fucking take a shot and so for me i always had to defend myself against him yeah and then i had to defend myself against my big brother being eight years older not saying my brother picked on me that way but sometimes he would be mad i'm like oh damn i gotta protect myself so i would always have to stand up against him and just you know i hit puberty late so i had to be like that small guy trying to like yeah you gotta be technical i was like that red panda you know like when he gets the scared he just stands up as tall as he can like that was me yeah i was like i'm trying to fake it to make it and then once I got, I think once I turned 18, I got, no, 19, I got a little thicker 
And then I was like, all right, cool. Like now I'm actually competing and getting grown man strength and doing what I need to do. And yeah. now I can compete with everyone. And then I just got super technical. But by the time the strength came in, the technique already grew so much that I'm like, oh, wait, now I could really toss you? This is great. When did you take your first amateur fight? Um, so I, I've been doing karate since I was four years old. So martial arts in general since I was four. Yeah. I did uh, my first Muay Thai fight when I was 16 uh, won my f- and won my first belt when I was 18. Yeah. So I've been fighting technically perf- amateur since I was 16. Um, I mean, point fighting doesn't really count if you watch the Karate Kid. Yeah. But uh, we don't do those street fights just like that. Was, ah. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, I did all those different tournaments. But my first belt, I was 18, and just kept on winning belts from there. Was that your proudest moment of your childhood? Um, what just winning belts or? Yeah, winning that um, winning that championship at 18. No, man, I, I don't. I never really took pride in that. Yeah. I don't know why. For me, there was just another fight. Just so happened a belt was attached to it. Yeah. Um, I was happy to break accolades and, you know, break records and be pioneers for amateur MMA. But that's, I was like, oh, cool. Like, I'm just listening to my coach. You know, like I wasn't trying to do crazy things. I was just like, yeah. oh, I'm doing more than you. I thought this is what everyone did. Yeah. You know, I was just saying yes to my coach because he said this is what I should do. So do you, did you have a, f- a favorite fighter growing up? Um... Oh, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao? Manny Pacquiao was my favorite fighter. So your nationality, you got it. I'm Mexican-Puerto Rican. Mexican-Puerto Rican. Which he was Man, like the shout Mex- out Puerto Rico right yeah. now. He was the executioner, but yeah. Manny, which also, random fact, that I hope he never unfollows me, he's actually, he follows me, both him and his foundation on uh, Instagram. That's insane. No clue why, but I love it. That's insane. I almost fallen the Philippines once for my Brave debut. Sadly, I couldn't make it. I had a, had a nice laceration, then Duke Rufus sadly got me sick. <laughs> I got the flu, so yeah. I couldn't go, but... um. Man, it's it's what he's done, not just in his sport. So he became, for people who don't know, an eight division world champ. He skipped multiple weight classes just to do eight divisions. He could have done way more. That's insane. Has anybody ever done that no. many divisions? I think so far the most is six. That's insane. And so he did eight, and uh, from 108 all the way to 154. That's insane. And which is like his last fight against Antonio Margrito, at least his last belt. Um, you just see the size difference. There was a 20 pound weight size difference during the fight. Yeah. And uh, he demolished Margarito to where Margarito needed surgery after. So I took inspiration off of that. I'm yeah. Like, man, if this little guy can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. Same thing with Joseph Benavidez beating uh, Miguel Angel Torres um, when he was in WCW, or not WC, yeah, was it WCW? Uh, or not w, uh, WEC, excuse me, WEC. Okay. And Miguel, being from Gary, Indiana, right across like West Chicago, yeah. he was tall. So I was like, Gary is a horrible place too. I know, yeah. It's it's just like Chicago, just I think smaller, poorer. Yeah, <laughs> like, or, is that possible? Yeah, right. <laughs> Depending on where you go in Chicago, but yeah. he, I saw Joseph Benavides. He's five two, and he was beating a guy that was like five nine, five ten. So yeah. again, I'm watching these guys saying if I, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah, yeah. And so as I uh, went through Titan, you know, I, so as an amateur, I became a two time world champ. Uh, through this IMF organization, fighting five times in one week, two years in a row. Mm. Won that. I was happy. Turned pro for Titan. Um, I won the belt at 3-0. I defended it against a guy who was 18-2 and at 4-0. and And then I bumped up weight class because I'm like, well, I want to be different. If I lose, at least I'm saying I'm trying to do something you know special, like Canelo versus uh, Bivol. He's like, if I lose, these guys are bigger. Like yeah. I have the excuse, but at least I can say I tried. So I ended up winning, defending it, and then bumping back down, defending it. I got called to the UFC. For me, I never wanted to be average because I saw Manny Pacquiao be different. Then he started his foundation. Dude, he's literally passing out money. Yeah. And so years later, I have my own foundation called the Team Shorty Foundation. Last Thanksgiving, I'm literally passing out money you yeah. know, to people in the streets. So, like, I'm trying to follow that blueprint and hopefully, you know, pass him up Yeah. But in the MMA world. That's dope. Yeah, I love that. So wh- what about the MMA world? Who do you love the most in the MMA world? Um... You know, it's funny. I've never been like I, I watch MMA fights you yeah. know, when they happen, but I never rewatch them. Um, so I did think you have DJ's, a fighter? I think DJ would probably be my most fan favorite. Like I met him in person. Dude, he is tiny. Yeah. Like because we fought in the same card and it's me, him and TJ Dillashaw talking in, in like a nice little circle. And we're just having a good conversation. This is when they wanted DJ to fight TJ if DJ would have beat uh, uh, Cejudo. Yeah. And so that's when we're all just kind of like talking shit to each other, having a good time. And DJ is maybe 5'2", five, 5'1", five, skinny frame, could easily make 115, straw weight. Like, yeah. if he wanted to, he could. And But there's no reason to. Like, his natural weight's 125. Like, he'll just yeah. fight there. And uh, I'm looking at him, and I'm kind of checking him, you know, because I'm now a flyweight. I'm hoping to fight him one day. Yeah. He even brought me up in an interview saying, like, hey, I might fight Shorty Torres or Sergio Pettis when he was in the UFC as well yeah. one day because these are two kids coming up. And I'm just like, this guy's small. 
and I know all the fighters personally that he's beaten. And I'm like, those guys are pretty big. Like, they give me a run for my money, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, how is he doing this? That's how technical he is. Dude, and then now at, at, at 1FC, older, not in his prime anymore, he's technically fighting at 135. His only two losses be- besides Cejudo had been at 135, and now he's knocking people out it's at insane. 1FC. So, like, that's just how good he is. Jiu-jitsu and it is curbed. Dude, suplex to an armbar. It's insane. Like, I love Ray Borg, but it's like, damn, dude, that that sucks. That's hard. You yeah. Know? That's how good DJ is. That's stuff you do in practice because yeah. it's just fun to do. You never do in the match because you don't have the confidence. Dude, that's how high level he was where he's like, I'm so good, I'm going to do a suplex to an armbar. You know, Insane. like he's knocking out. Like uh, midair, too. Ki- Kyoji Horiguchi. He's, uh, he was a double uh, promotional champ, Ryzen or Risen yeah. and Bellator. He ended up, you know, uh, armbarring Kyoji Horiguchi. You know, so it's like all these guys he's beaten and dominated, and the UFC does not talk about him. Why? Yeah, he's why? a small guy. And that's why they traded him. Yeah, you like never hear him talk in the uh, the GOAT talk. Yeah. So it's like, why? He's done more work than John Jones. Yeah. He, because everyone thinks that the, you know, because no one talks about it, the flyweight weight class is whatever. Yeah. He beat Ali Bagotinov. Ali Bagotinov is, at least when I was going to fight him, I believe is like a five time Sambo world and Russian, you know, Sambo champion. Yeah. Like, this guy is legit. That's you know, insane. De- demolishes him, demolishes all these guys. They did a whole contender, or not contender series, uh, Ultimate Fighter for DJ to fight someone. Tim Elliott ended up be, uh, winning the championship for the Ultimate Fighter. They had every champion from every regional promotion, LFA, Titan, yeah. um, CFFC, all these whatever, and all champions, all high-level guys, Tim Elliott wins, he ends up being Tim Elliott. Like, they did a whole show for him, yeah. and the UFC still didn't promote DJ. They were just hoping that champion would win. That's insane. So, it again, it's like what we were talking about earlier. It's like YouTubers are popular because they have that pedestal. Yeah, the marketing. Be, for us, most fighters, if you, I mean, you already know from the gym, most fighters aren't the brightest in the world. So when they talk, they're like, ah. It's like you go, hey, man, how was your day? How was everything? It was great. Fuck, give me some more information. You know, it's yeah. like, dude, just speak. Yeah. You know, just people don't want to make videos. They don't want to take photos. They don't want to do anything. Oh, yeah. Or most fighters, from what I've noticed, are introverts. Yep. And it's like, oh, man, I, I get it. I understand you're to yourself, but, dude, take a set of photos, and then every once in a while just post so you can at least be somewhat active. Yeah, you got to build your life. brand. Any, any little thing. Yeah, and you got to so build your brand. Fighting isn't fighting anymore, sadly. No. It's can you promote yourself? I know some really good Dagestani Russian wrestlers that are phenomenal athletes, but because they don't speak English and because they don't promote themselves, no one cares. Yeah. So. It's insane. What about your style? Do you prefer to be standing or you prefer to take it to the ground? I prefer standing, but my styles are boxing, Muay Thai, Judo. So yeah. I'm a, an aggressive counter fighter. So I walk forward close enough to where, and especially because I'm short, but close enough to where you're like, dude, get the fuck away from me. And so you put some out there, and that's what I try to counter. Yeah. And then from there, people don't like my pressure, so they tie up with me. Uh, for being a small guy, I'm very good at Muay Thai, especially on my clinch. And because I was an All-American wrestler and I'm uh, hopefully soon a judo black belt, that when I grab people, like because of my knees, it sets up where the hips are going to go. And then from there, I have a throw ready and set to, to take them down. Yeah. And so... Do you do any of like the inside outside trips? Um, I can. I'm or good with, at I'm good at an inside trip. I do a lot of sweeps. Yeah. The inside trip with like your leg bends in is a little harder. Uh, I've never been a fan of that just because my balance with that one sucks. But like inside trips, kind of reaping the opposite leg. Yeah. That I can do. Um, but I'm more with sweeps and big throws. Those are my my huge huge things. Yeah. If I do try to like sweep, it's more of like a fake. Okay. Because I want your leg to step back. Now I can throw. So what's kind of your vision for the next, like, five five years or so? Um, My goal at the time when I first signed the Brave, I was hoping to do what I did in Titan, be a double weight class champ, 25 uh, flyweight and bantamweight. Now that I'm fighting bantamweight, depending on how many fights I get consecutively, if I can keep my body weight low, then maybe back down to flyweight, um, but maybe even going up to featherweight. I don't want one belt. I want as many belts as I can get. Yeah. My goal is, again, not to just – be a part of the sport and be a champion. Anyone honestly could be a champion. But like Holly Holmes said, it's like you're not a champion until you defend it. Yeah. For me, I want to defend it and then either bump up or bump down. But I want more than one belt. Now, did you title defend with Titan FC? Yeah. So I won the belt against a guy who was 18. Or I won the belt against a guy who was 7-2. and two. Yeah. I defended it against a guy who was 18-2. and two, Knocked him out in 86 seconds. Bumped up a weight class. Beat the guy who was 17-7. and seven, 
defended that one against a guy who was seven and two, and then bumped back down against another guy who was seven and two. Jeez. Yeah. So I. So you had five title defenses. By the time I entered the UFC, I think I was like sixty nine and nineteen was the wow. record of the guys that I beat, and I was only seven and zero. Oh. Wow. You know, so for me, like, I want to, given I had a vast amateur career, so I had the accolades to do that. Yeah. And experience, should I say. But for me, I don't want to be average. Yeah. Like, that's just not at all in my in my game. And then how old are you right now? I'm 30 years old, sadly. <laughs> I mean, in, I, in my head, I'm like, God damn it, I'm 30. Well, I always hear, like, your fighter's prime is, cut like, around that 30. To, oh, yeah. Is that true? Like, do yeah. you really feel like... 28 to 32 is usually your prime. You feel like you're, you're in that prime zone? If you're smaller, and depending on how much damage you take, me, I take a fuck ton of damage if you see scars in yeah. my face, and especially with little scratches, um, your prime might be a little younger. They yeah. say, like, Vasil Lomachenko had 365 amateur fights or 366 amateur fights, and I think only lost one, which is great, but... Dude, that's like four amateur careers. Plus, now his professional career, like, he should technically be done, but his body is somehow lasting. Like, he has uh, shoulder surgery. Yeah. I think he's had other surgeries, but, you know, and again, you've had your injuries as well, but some people like myself have had 26 MMA fights as amateur. I've had 12 as a pro. I've had 50 in kickboxing and Muay Thai. I have hundreds in wrestling. Yeah. You know, so like, my body now is catching up to me, but because of my injury, I had no choice but to rehab my entire body. And now I actually start stretching for what's in my life. What do you do? What do you do health wise? Like the recovery process? Is there anything um, like routinely that you like to invest into, eat, whatever? Um, well, definitely a healthy. Now as I'm getting older, you know, given carbs are now be becoming like my worst enemy, yeah. uh, especially as a Mexican. But <sighs> you know, for me, it's it's trying to eat as clean as possible. Um, I know with that naturally health wise my body's gonna recover much better especially with intermittent fasting like your hormones are, are reacting different so your body gets to heal itself a little longer yeah um i try to get massages i try to get stretched out if i can if i can afford it yeah but um honestly the biggest thing is just rest yeah like resting and stretching in your own recovery i take hot baths here and there but yeah. the biggest thing has been resting and stretching i've never I, i've never stretched so much in my life which has been like a huge thing i hate stretching like yeah i did i can do pad work cardio all day every day i hate it but i'll do it stretch for like five minutes i want to shoot myself like yeah, i 100 percent hate stretching so boring well it's boring but for me because i never did it growing up yeah that it, one it's something new so i'm bad at it and then two like it's just painful for me yeah you know because i've never done it so when i'm yeah. in positions i'm like and i see myself in mirrors next to me so i look dumb like yeah i'm thinking i'm like touching my toes or like this far but i'm actually like this far away yeah. from touching my toes and i'm like mm, you know so i do yoga that helps i do a yoga once a week you ever go to yoga like again i'm not trying to be that person where it's like for example if you're fighting if yeah. you see a bigger person you're like oh they're gonna get tired faster yeah I remember doing hot yoga. I'm like, oh, I see a bigger person here. They're going to struggle with me. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, like, yeah. they're going to be tired too. I don't know where, you know, big ladies, big men putting their feet behind their head. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm all mad. I was it's like, insane. I would get mad. <sighs> yeah, I Dude, get mad. I was so upset. And I'm like, you know, it's one hot yoga, so I'm just dying already. That shit's hard. But then two, I'm trying to keep up with them. And I'm just like, ah, it's so yeah. aggravating. But I do it. Yeah, that shit's hard. So... What about, do you plan on staying in Chicago or just kind of wherever the fight world takes you? And I just moved back. Yeah? So I've been gone since I was 18. Okay. Yeah, so my father, my dad was a gang leader. So yeah. he was just like, hey, get out of Chicago. Like, Chicago's going to kill you. And then years later, my friend uh, Ed Brown, he was a Chicago boxer. I yeah. believe he was 20-0, 16 KOs, was about to make his Showtime boxing debut. He gets shot four times in the head uh, right before Christmas and then passes away. Wow. And just kind of being out in the street, hanging out, going to the clubs, hanging out with his friends. Like, he wasn't doing any gang stuff. Yeah. Given in a bad neighborhood, so no matter if you're black, brown, whatever color, yeah. if you were part of that ethnicity, then you were probably, you know, going to yeah. get hit up by something and got shot by a drive-by four times and died. So I was just like, okay, my dad's right. You know, so every two years I'd move somewhere else, Colorado, um, you know, train at Team Elevation or Muscle Farm. I'd go to Jackson Wink down in New Mexico. Or yeah. I'd go to, you know, every different place. I just came back from Florida for being there four and a half years. Do you train American Top Team? I went to American Top Team for two years. Yeah. Then I, Dean Thomas and Jillian and I left to live with him. And so we stayed with Dean Thomas for about two years. And then Dean got super busy with the UFC being a, a fight commentator. Yeah. So we're like, okay, well, let's train at the other gyms. I trained at the Goat Shed, trained at American Combat Academy. And then eventually I was like, I feel that I'm kind of semi-plateauing. Yeah. And for me, usually once I plateau some more, I feel that feeling. I'm like, all right, I got to get up and go. What two years did you train at Top Team? Uh, twenty The start of 2018 all the way to, like, the start of the pandemic. 
Did you train with a gentleman named Dalton Rasta at all? Do you know? I don't believe there's so. There's a bunch of people down there. No, there's a ton there's of There's so dude. many people. And it's it's so big, it's like a high school. Yeah, there's, it's, there's so many people. Like, there's the Russians. Because yeah. It's all Russians. Like, that's all they speak. Yeah. It's the Brazilians, for sure. It's And we call it Brazilian top team because there's more Brazilians there than anything. Yeah. Um, there's the outcasts, which we were part of. Yeah. Um, And then there's just other people. Like, there's so many. There's the amateurs that, you know, yeah. aren't allowed in certain areas. It's It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about, do you have any hobbies outside of fighting right now? You know, it's crazy. Years ago, given I was going through my, you know, big mental depression, people would ask me that. They're like, dude, what's, what do you like to do? I was like, I don't know. Because my whole life was revolved around fighting. Yeah. And especially during COVID, I'm like, damn, what do I do? I can't yeah. go in the gym or I can't train as hard is, is as I Is that when the depression hit? Um, Well, it was hitting before that, before the UFC. Yeah. But... And then the UFC didn't help. And then I got released by the UFC, which made it even worse. Yeah. And then relationship problems. And then my father was slowly passing away. Yeah. You know, so it was like, this is so all So many things kinda, all at once. It's, I, well, the three biggest things that I really wanted in my life was, you know, family, because I was engaged. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, this is going great. But now my relationship is going downhill. Yeah. And we're both still trying to fight, but we know it's inevitable that it's going to end, which it's always hard letting go. Two is I built my whole career up to be, you know, something in the UFC and UFC doesn't just hire me to masculate me. They made me look really, really bad with the way they cut me. And then I, my father passes away. The yeah. reason why I really started fighting. So I'm like, damn, all the three things I wanted to like please and make happy and have in my life were all gone. So even yeah. still today, I'm like, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. So I'm, that's why I have that motivation of like, cool, if I, something bad happens tomorrow, like, How'd it's you not as bad as that. that? Oh, I just never gave up. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of, um, there's a lot, one, it's a lot of self-talk and I've, you know, notice that no matter how much TED Talk you watch, you know, inspirational videos, books you read, no matter what you do, it still revolves around you. Like I was relying on people. I'm a big extrovert. As you mm-hmm. can tell, I talk my ass off. I relied on people for their energy and stuff. And But especially during COVID, no one's there. Yeah. You know, that's why a lot of people committed suicide or were suicidal during COVID. I or think, I think mental really health killed more people during COVID than yeah. COVID. Dude, yeah. The flu still technically killed more people during COVID. Yeah. But the fact was for me... I did a lot of self-reflection. I would journal a fuck ton. I would journal so much, journaling would give me anxiety. Yeah. You know, but it was just re-looking at a lot of my past traumas. Mm -hmm. And given when I finally, you know, let my ex go, given it's like I let her go, but I wasn't ready to let go, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I started to like, okay, I really need to figure this out because Mm -hmm. I'm, in a sense, terrorizing her life mentally. I'm terrorizing other people's lives because I'm not taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever was around me, I was like sabotaging my life. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I need to fix myself because if I don't fix myself, I'm going to just mess up everyone else's life Whoever, or I'm going to end up alone. So I had to work on a lot with when it came to myself, when it came to hell, listening to songs, finding different ways to vent, finding different things to make me happy, whether it was getting out, socializing, or even just going out by myself. Yeah. And I did that a lot, uh, not just during COVID, but just for me of like, you know what, let me be happy being alone. If I can finally be happy being alone, I'm going to be much happier when finally somebody's there compared to, yep. you know, you're home alone and you're just like, I fucking hate this. Yeah. It's so like true. there's a difference between being bored and then always over contemplating of like who you can be, what you could be, what mm. you should be, yada, yada, yada. Absolutely. You know, shower conversations, even though you're just laying in bed. Yeah. You know, so there was a lot of self-talk, man. It was fucking hard. Yeah. And a lot of venting. I mean, we're guys. Yeah. We're tough guys too. You know, it's like I'm pretty sure you've been through your fair share of traumas that yeah. you fucking hate talking about. But it's the fact of like, dude, sometimes it's not even given we all I think everyone needs therapy or at least some type of coaching or mentorship or something. Yeah. I finally became vulnerable enough to, you know, go, you know what, all right. I need to talk about this. You know, because yeah. like when my father passed away, I was still gonna go fight three weeks later. And then uh, I think it was two days before the fight. I'm like trying to cut weight. My body plateaued to hit a wall for some reason. It just wasn't cutting, but it was my emotions. So it was at Worlds. And every single day at Worlds, like I was fine. I was mm-hmm. like mentally, I'm like, cool. After the fight's over, I'll cry. I'll burst out, do whatever I need to do. But I'm just going to hold it until that fight's over. And I was good. And then the whole fight week at Worlds, I was a two-time world champ. So everyone looks up to me or at least knows of me. And they're like, oh, shorty. Hey, my condolences is your father. I'm like, oh. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Oh, hey. Oh, your condolences. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And like everyone, every single day, every five minutes, I'm like, hey, man, I'm just trying to fight. Like, stop bringing this up. And it just got darker and darker for me. I ended up having my first ever panic attack. Yeah. And during the panic attack, because my life was so low mentally, that was just like my my uh, nutritionist who suffered through many panic attacks was trying to coach me. 
And I wanted to do the opposite of what he was telling me because I'd hope I would never wake up. Mm. Like I was hoping either I pass out, I die, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And dude, after that, you know, I, I had to withdraw from the fight, which sucked. And then because you don't get paid. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, was supposed to fight for the world title at the time, so I couldn't do that. But um, went home and dude, I took a lot of time to myself. But it's it still a lot of things linger. And if you don't finally confront them, like they're going to keep it's on gonna explode. You. Well, it's, it's like saying you're going to fill your jar until it pops. Yep. That's really what it is. And for me, I had to work on myself so much. And again, like, I can be like, oh, dude, all you got to do is vent. But everyone's different. Yeah. You know? So, like, some people don't talk at all. And that, that doesn't cure them whatsoever. For me, it helped get me by through certain circumstances. And then I had to talk to mentors, other father figures, people I looked up to, or people that I know have been through the similar situation. Yeah. You know, um, there's, I, I go to a place called MVP, Merging Veterans and Players, which is, which is veterans of the military and then current and former professional athletes. So we do an hour of workout and then an hour of just open table. Mm. So it's a closed room, no phones, whatever, and we talk about whatever, whether it's positive stuff, whether it's negative stuff. And there's a quote, um, it's a video series, it's like quotes by an 85 year old man. And one of them is like, if we're all in a room full of people and you all put your bullshit in the middle of the pile, you would look at everyone else's bullshit and you'd grab yours back and go, ah, you know what, I think I'm going to keep this. Yeah. Because you start to realize like, yeah, it still might be a big deal, but it's a big deal to you. So you have to figure out why it's a big deal to you and how to be able to move around it. Yeah. Compared to like, dude, let's, let's for the fun of it, I always say it's like, let's say we got our nails done. I got my nails done. I chip and I'm like, ah, fuck, that sucks. Dude, I just got it done. And then for you, you chip your nail and you're like, oh, my day's over. It's ruined. And yeah. some li- it's the littlest thing to me. But for you, like that meant a lot to you. Yeah. And be able to be able to, you know, figure out why and then maneuver around it. Absolutely. But it's like what triggers you. Yeah. You know, like why is it tree? A lot of people don't ask why. Yeah. Or like why? Yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't like this. But why don't you like it? Was it some from, you know, back in the day that still haunts you today? So, dude, I had to go through actually a lot of places that still like traumatize me. Mm. You know, where I even had people that close friends come up to me and go, dude, uh, if you need anything, just let me know. And me, I'm a big empath. So I don't like putting my emotions out there. So I was just like, oh, shit. Damn, you can read me? Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Damn, I'm, I'm fucking up. I must be really, really dark or sad right now. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, man, it's 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 a lot of stuff. This whole fighting game, and you know, with your shoulder, it's like we have our pains, physical pains. We have our mental pains. Uh, fighting 100%, once you get to a certain level, everyone has the same tools. Everyone has two hands, two yeah. elbows, two knees, two feet, you know. But why are you able to use it better than me? Yeah. You know, like I could say every excuse that Alex Press felt like, oh, I, I didn't care. I wanted to lose. What I, I don't know what he was going through. Yeah. He could have been going through the same shit I was, or even worse. Look at Khabib versus Justin Gaethje. Everyone knows Khabib's father was his biggest part of his life. His father passes away, does his first fight without his dad in his corner, wins immediately after he wins, breaks down crying, yeah. and then he retires. You know, like that's why he retired because of his father. And, and yeah. so it's it's a crazy thing that you know you have to figure out why you know things motivate you this that. And it was so much self talk. Yeah, so much. That's that's deep. That's deep Dude, and so powerful. Sucked. It needed. sucks. It's yeah. It's easily the worst thing you'll ever do. Or let me let me rephrase that. It's the best thing you'll ever do, but the worst experience yeah. throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Like it's going through your own traumas because no one can help you. Yeah, that's the biggest battle. It's 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 you against you. Yeah. That absolutely. whole Rocky thing where he's talking to Creed, or he's like, "That's your biggest enemy in the mirror." It's like, yeah. No, yeah. You know, so what when we see fighters or pra- jujitsu practitioners or whoever inside whatever arena competing, it's like. They, they're not just competing for that day. Some people are able to zone out everything. And yeah. they're like, whatever problems I have is outside. But some people bring those problems in. I did that once and I, you know, paid the price. I lost. Yeah. You know, it's like that cost me technically my career, mm-hmm. you know, given I was able to pick it back up. But, yeah. you know, that's that's the look at Shia LaBeouf is uh, his recent interview is, is all over the place where he's like, dude, Shia LaBeouf is in holes, you know, even Stevens, all these great yeah. movies, Eagle Eye and all that. And then you hear about his depression. You're like, dude, you have money. You have this. You have that. What are you depressed about? That's not important to him. It was about everything else. Yeah. So, and then you start to realize deep shit. And you're like, oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. I always try to tell people fulfillment starts within. You know what I mean? If you're not fulfilled within, you'll never be fulfilled without. So It's it's, it's success. Like, what's success to you? Yeah. My brother wants my life. Yeah. He wants to be, you know, the guy who has money. He wants the guy who has belts. The guy who's popular. Me, I've always wanted a family. Yeah. You know, and he has a family. 
I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm envious of you. Like, I, I don't care how popular I get. That's what I want. Yeah. But since I can't focus on that right now, I got to do what I need to do to keep on building. So yeah. when I do have that, I can be prepared for it. For yeah. him, he never had the opportunity, so he envies the person who did. Yes. You know, so it's like everyone's success is different. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely deep. What about jumping into your favorite fight? What was your favorite fight of all time? Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite fight. You know, for me, it the crazy thing is, like, I've had fights that I've gone in there super excited, pro debut, yeah. or super anxious, pro debut. Um, second fight was probably the most fun because I'm like, oh, hey, I get to elbow. I've never elbowed before, yeah. and I've never practiced it. So when I was on top, I was like, oh, this, oh, hey, this is great. You see, like, blood coming out. I was like, wow, yeah. this is awesome. I could do this. The cutters. Um, now I got blood hungry, and you learn through every single fight. So yeah. I don't know if, have, if I've, I, I've had fun fights, if you want to say, because they all suck. I've always ended up... Even if I've won 35 of my fights, I've lost two, had one draw. Out of all 35 of my fights that I've won, I look like I lost, like physically. Yeah. Because of how, like, light my skin is. Like, any little scratch is like... Pfft. Yeah. That was going to be my final question is when they oil you guys up before yeah. a fight, they, like, wax your guys' faces. Well, the Vaseline, yeah. Yeah. Is that to so the glove doesn't cut you immediately? Um. So the Vaseline does primarily two things. Uh, help prevent cuts. You know, make things a little yeah. bit smoother, especially against, you know, they put it here. They, they call it oh, the raccoon. The cure around the eyes and then on the nose. Yeah. Because this is where you don't want to bleed. This is where it's trouble. If you bleed here, you bleed here. Like, who cares? Yeah. So they put the raccoon eyes on you here, and so they call it that. Yeah. Um. So to help prevent cuts and then also to help prevent sweat from going in your eyes. Oh, okay. So if you do bleed or if you do sweat a lot, the sweat, you know, and the, or the vast link helps block and it goes in different directions. Okay. I mean, so. I was I over time I was like I bet that's so especially with those guys with like like Nate Diaz the just the excessive amount of scar tissue I'm like there's no way he could go in there dry faced mm -hmm. and and not just get ripped open immediately when that glove catches his skin you know it's crazy so I didn't know this so like my brother is like the pretty boy if you want to say he's the one that yeah. like, takes care of himself all that stuff and like lotions himself all that mm -hmm. I never did that growing yeah. up yeah and as when I made it to the UFC I had a lady bless you I had a lady always look at me Thanks. and kind of like your skin's very dry I'm technically I'm Mexican Puerto Rican, but my skin is white. So yeah. I don't notice that my skin is dry. I might feel it in my hands, but that's yeah, about yeah. it. So I never lotioned my skin. Dude, she put lotion on me one day and it just like evaporated. It was like like just sucked everything out. And she was like, Yeah, we need more lotion. You never lotion your skin. And because we sweat so much, yeah, your skin's gonna be dry. So you have to lotion yourself constantly. If your skin is moisturized, it's harder for your skin to break. Yeah. Your skin's dry, it's gonna break easy. So when you go in fights, if you're not vast leaned up, at least your eyes, then you're going to cut. So for me, even uh, at the end of every night, like I'm now like lathering my skin, not just so it seem a little more youthful, but just yeah. overall my skin feels better too. Yeah, I never do lotion. Dude, I get like, I mean, besides scratching, I, I've had, let's see, cut here, the stitches wise here, here. I've had seven here, 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 staples. Um, I think I had one in the back of my head. I've had, you know, stitches. I've had cuts on my hands and arms, all that stuff, shins from kicking people. Oh, like, the it's shins not, are the worst. It's My shins fun. always get bruised up from jujitsu. I don't even know why. Like Tony Ferguson, his last fight against Nate Diaz. He had a nice little gash on his shin. Yeah. You get checked. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're that not was fun, dude. I was like, geez, dude, that's a nice gash. That yeah. shit was bleeding. You ever cut your toenail too short? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> those, I think those are the worst ones. That's the worst. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like that's a paper worst, cut. Dude. Oh, my God. That's the worst. Dope. Is there anything else? I think we're an hour, hour 10 in. Um, Anything else you want to talk about? I think the biggest thing is is my foundation. Yes. Um, so my foundation is called Team Shorty Foundation. Yeah. I started it primarily to help give kids, teens, and young adults a different opportunity, another opportunity to get inside the gym and off the streets. Yep. So, for example, you know, we're talking about off air, you know, the things in high school that you had to go through. If you were able to go to the gym earlier, maybe that would have changed that, yeah. you know, direction. Maybe you would have been able to use your, your strength and aggression somewhere else. Yeah. My brother didn't have that. My father, especially ta very talented, didn't have that. Yeah. But what if they did? It's not just the gym of like, cool, let's teach you how to fight, let's teach you how to train, and maybe you'll be a professional fighter, but it's putting you in front of positive, for us at least, male role models yeah. that we might have not had as kids. Again, my yeah, dad was I a gang not. leader. He didn't have a father. Yeah. So even though he my didn't dad give was me the jail. Yeah. So. It's, so it's like, dude, any little thing like that could have made the yep. biggest difference for me, yeah. my role That's models, That's why I think I was coaches. so wild because there was I was the man in my house at 10 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like... 
nobody ever told me what to to like once especially once i like hit puberty i remember the last time my mom went to spank me you know what i mean and i'm like 12 <laughs> years old the hand, ha. yeah <laughs> it was like some Goku. and i was like and i feel so bad looking back now making her cry and everything like that and uh but yeah there was no man in the house you yeah. know what i mean so well, I you like, didn't know any better but i i always wondered that i'm like i wonder if there was somebody there to make me like actually consistently stick stick to a sport and take out that aggression because like, you know what I, mean? I feel like there's something that can be capitalized on when you love you know, hitting people. I love, you know, I can't do it anymore, but uh, <laughs> loved hitting people. You, know uh, you can do mean? some so combat like, jiu-jitsu. You can do that. You I know. I was thinking that. The combat Dude, jiu-jitsu is kind of fun. Their belt, slow, their belt level slowly goes down the more you hit them. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's so That's funny. a that's 100% effect. That's hilarious. You, I remember my second fight was against a uh, third-degree black belt. Yeah. And he started, I knew nothing about leg locks. And I was just in this like proper position to be able to hammer fist them, and that's where I elbowed him a few. Yeah, times. I, I would like, never want to. Oh wow, he sucks! Like yeah. this is great, you know. Like I'm a brown belt, but I'm like third degree black belt. Like you should be, you know, yeah. high tier. I know I started hitting. Him, I was like, oh wow, this is great. Actually, you know what? I want this fight in the ground now, and I'm doing all the things possible. I know you don't follow uh, the jujitsu people that much, but there's a guy named Gary Tonin, and mm-hmm. I think he went to fight in one or something and throwing one of the leg entanglements what what's the one where you're on your back and you try to throw your legs up around like like kind of like, like an minari roll and a minari or, or like something an like that and an ashi mm-hmm. right so he goes in tries to you know uh rip into like an inside heel hook but mm-hmm. the dude like plants his foot leans down and just hammer fists the shit out of him like two or three times and it just puts him out mm-hmm. and it was like ah dude i don't know if i would you know want to try to throw a leg lock in like anywhere street fight ryan like, hall did it you know that's how ryan hall tapped out bj penn and then people were like all right he's going for m and r rolls just stay away from this we'll be yeah. fine but that only lasts so long, you know. Yeah, so dude. It's it's a crazy, crazy thing. But I'd be worried, on, like in the Chicago streets, me trying to Imanari roll somebody, and I get a Tim Timberland right on my forehead. <laughs> well, if you, uh, <laughs> yeah, are you from New fuck? York? And yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Without if uh, if you go to, I think it's Mexican martial arts on YouTube. They have a channel about that where it's like jujitsu doesn't work in real life because you'll see people like triangling somebody in an armbar, and then the friends like. It just stomps them out. It's like, yeah, yeah, man. If it's two against one, you can't do jujitsu. Like, you can't be like, hold on, wait, let me guillotine your friend real quick, and then yeah. we'll stand up and go. This ain't the movies. Like, they're just gonna jump you. Yeah, you know. So he's like, you need Mexican martial arts, and so he starts doing like Mexican jujitsu. So I think it's hilarious. Yeah. But, dude, just think about that. If you would have had, you know, positive male role models, yes. or even just role models in general, yeah. male or female, might have been different. For me, that was my way out of the neighborhood. Those people, I can tell you, my main coach, Master Bob Shermer. I've known South 16, who's still my coach today at every one of my fights. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Yeah. Like he 100% saved my life, not just with um, going to school, but in MMA. Yeah. Like I, w- I, I was just doing this for fun, not ever thinking I was going to be professional. And then mm. the little I know, like I was saying earlier, like the belts just came. Yeah. Like I was just doing what he told me to do. I was like, fine, sure, you're the older one. Like the big brother kind of like, hey, I went left, don't do it, go right. So he would give me yeah. his reason. I'm like, I don't want to, but fine. You know what? Yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. I'm just going to accept all pride here. I'm just like swallow it down. I'm like, fine, you're right. Not an nowhere, I'm a pioneer in amateur MMA, and I'm like, oh, every promotion wants me? Mm. Oh, okay, cool. And then now I'm you know, doing stuff very early mm. in my career that people have never even dreamt of or even tried to achieve yeah. you know, or now are trying to achieve and you know, can't. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, like, this is awesome. So yeah. I had that. So my foundation does that. I sponsor kids actually right before we got on air, I was on my phone zelling somebody 500 for a sponsorship. Wow, you know, wow. like I put my logo on their banner, but um, as you are starting to learn, given more MMA, like we don't have money for the gym. We don't have money for training. We yeah. have to pay for all these things. 40% of my paycheck goes to my team and taxes, you know, yeah. so yeah. it's a lot of stuff. So, you know, sponsors help out a lot. So my foundation helps sponsor uh, older people, you know, young adults yeah. to get a different chance. Um, teenagers maybe coming out of college or high school that go, hey, man, I'm not going to go to college or I'm not going to go to the military. Let me join something mm. that might give me some positive reinforcement. Yeah. And kids just stay off the streets. Like, dude, I, I went to an elementary school to do a speech. All the kids loved it. Like, I'm happy about it. But I'm like, all right, guys, let's take a group picture. I don't know. You see some kids throwing up the fork and some kids throwing up the king. I was like, dude, you're nine years old. And, you know, yeah. you might you might not know, but sadly, a lot of those kids know what they're throwing. They up. know the king sign is a very common one, you know, because sometimes it's accidental, like you stick your thumb out instead of doing the typical rock sign. Yeah. But like kids are doing the fork and, you know, other, you know, jet signs and this and that. I'm like, 
mm, yeah. damn it, you know? So I thought it was just me, but like, it's everyone. They told me not to joke around about them signs. Like, you just oh, you don't joke around about yeah, them. Yeah, no. You I don't mean, joke around about them. I, my dad's gang was on the north side. I was raised in the south. Yeah. So I got checked a lot. I'm like, ah, God damn it. You know, like, yeah. It's not my fault. It's my dad. You know, it's yeah. not me. But your blood, so it's automatic. So my foundation helps do that. And, man, it helps change a lot of people's lives. Like, one kid went to his first competition. He won it. And then after, I was like, hey, if you win, I'll take you to Universal. Yeah. And then we went to Universal Studios. Like, for him, now he just wants to get back in the gym because that just motivates him yeah. to do something positive that's instead so of this. You know? Yeah, that's so, awesome. Um, been able to do turkey drives, giving money away instead of, like, yeah. turkeys. Uh, did, you know, Toys for Tots, you know, being able to do Christmas presents. And 100% of the proceeds from my um, website, TeamShorty.com, go to my foundation so i make no money actually i lose money because i make the shirts and then you guys buy it and then yeah you know it goes to the foundation so it just does that every that's time awesome. i fight 10 percent of my paycheck goes to my foundation that's awesome so that's all i try to do it's i'm gonna there's a story with alexander the great when he died richest person in the world at the time they said when he died or if he got assassinated or whatever he goes hey when you bury me go to like um burn me at the stake at the time he goes have my hands outside the coffin and give every peasant there a gold coin and let them try to get that gold coin in my hand. Like, that's their goal. And if they get it, then also they'll win some money. All the peasants are throwing this gold coin, and basically you're dead. Like, all the gold coins just fall from his hand. And pretty much symbolizing, like, you come in this world with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing. doesn't matter what you accomplish yeah. money-wise in this world. So don't treat money as it's everything in the world. Yeah. Treat your life as Love of money life. is a root of all evil. Dude, that's most corruption in the world. Yeah. You know, so we're talking about medical bills. It's like, that's a lot of corruption in the States. We're talking about everything else. You know, yeah. gangs and violence all revolve around money. Yeah. So it's, it's a crazy thing. So the money I get, whether it's good money, bad money, whatever the case may be, whoever yeah. donates, dude, I'm just trying to give it away. Like, yeah. as long as I'm able to live comfortably, uh, comfortably for myself, I'm happy. Yeah. I make no money out of my foundation. That's why I give a lot of my money off of it. Yeah. I love so, that. And I'm hoping to start my own gym hopefully in five, six years. But Let's go. with that being said, you know, I want to be able to help donate and then help kids and see where it goes. Maybe change a life or two. Let's go. So. I always, I always think that I would say, you know what I mean? So many people are so focused on, like, I want to change the world. And I was like, Changing the world just starts with changing one world at a time. You know what I mean? If you change somebody's life, how they view the world and they're in this world and living in this world, in my mind, I've changed a world. Mm -hmm. If I can change one person's life, I've changed a world opposed to changing the world. You, you know what I was saying? When, when I went through like my lowest of lows, yeah. um, you know, everyone, every fighter, I want to be the best in the world, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, cool. I, I wish you nothing but the best. Hopefully you can do it. Yeah. Very freaking hard. Billion plus people in the world. Yeah, yeah. I always say I want to be the best me in the world because the best me can compete with some of the best. That's yes. all that matters. If as long as I'm mentally there and I'm physically, you know, it's, it's close to 100%. No training camp is perfect, but get to that point of like I'm just prepared no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Then yeah. I can I might still lose. It's reality, but I might be one of the best in the world. And if I'm one of the best in the world, other people are gonna follow that path. Yeah. Again, I loved Manny Packer growing up, and I literally following that that same blueprint, and now taking my own little direction around to see where I'm gonna lead to next. Love it. So the Shorty Foundation. The Team Shorty Foundation. The Team yes, Shorty Foundation. And then where can people find you on social media? So with the foundation, I always say we can, we will. Together we are Team Shorty because I wouldn't be able to do this without people. Yes. Same thing with supporters, followers, stuff like that. Yep. Whether you like me or not, like it's for a good cause. But TeamShorty.com, all the proceeds go to that. But Team Shorty Foundation on Instagram, on Twitter, I don't really use that, but Instagram for sure. Yep. And then uh, Jose Shorty Torres on Instagram for myself, and everything gets cross promoted and showed off. And I just appreciate love and support. Thank you. Dope, dope, guys. So this was we did this kind of unconventionally, but this was Jose <laughs> Shorty Torres, right? Yeah, yeah, awesome. I believe so. I, I get hit and had a lot. So. <laughs> Let's go. The Shorty Foundation. You guys can check it out. TheShortyFoundation dot com. And this was another episode of Adversity Kings. Thank you for joining us, brother. I appreciate, it, man. Thank you.